Hey guys, welcome back to the first Sunday haul of 2023. I took a little hiatus during the month of December for Vlogmas, and I know that I do have a lot of new subscribers that just joined during the month of December. I think there's about 7,000 of you, so I wanted to just do a quick little background on this video because it's not a normal or typical haul that you would see here on YouTube. I actually turn the camera around and focus on the products themselves, and I show you the makeup up close along with swatches of everything, and then at the end, I'll actually review the products in more of a mini review style format. And one thing I'm actually doing new for this year is I'm gonna insert little clips of me actually applying the makeup as well throughout the week so you can see them in action. And then at the very end of the video, I'm gonna rank everything from the worst product I tried this week to the best. So hopefully you guys like these new little additions and of course seeing what's new in the makeup world. So why don't we go ahead and jump right in and get started. Good morning guys, it's Monday. I just got in some things over the weekend that I wanted to share. The first one is from ColourPop. This is the Winx Club collection that came out last Thursday. And then I also got some things from QVC. I have new products from Mali Beauty, some Tarte products, and a foundation from Yensa. So let's go ahead and take all this upstairs, open it up, and we'll do some swatches. All right, so why don't we start with the stuff from QVC first. And I wanna open up the things from Mali because I'm so excited to try this brand all over again. I haven't tried anything from Mali in so long. They used to be sold at Ulta, and now that they're only on QVC, it's a little bit harder to get my hands on the products. I usually prefer to check things out in store in person, but at least QVC does have a really good return policy. I also saw some Mally things on Amazon as well, so if you don't want to order from QVC, that's definitely another option. The reason that I went there initially was to try this foundation. A couple of you guys had mentioned that you wanted to see this reviewed. This is the Stressless Performance Foundation. I believe she also has a Stressless Concealer as well. I didn't want to try that one just yet. I figured if I like the foundation, I'll go back for that. So um, this says, stressed out, no worries. This revolutionary foundation improves the look of fine lines and wrinkles and de-stresses your skin so you look flawless and carefree all day. The silky liquid formula gives medium to full coverage with a lightweight feel and wear. So it has a nice glass bottle. I got the shade beige. It was really hard to tell online what my shade was going to be, so hopefully this is okay. I'm just going to put a little pump in the back of my hand. It might be slightly deep for me, but not terrible. It has a really creamy feel. Actually, you know what this is reminding me of? Like right away, the Lisa Eldridge foundation. I think it has a similar texture. It starts out creamy, but it sinks right in and it dries down almost right away. So you do probably have to work quickly with this one. But like the Lisa Eldridge foundation, it's making my skin actually look smoother where I put it, which is so cool. And it does seem to have great coverage. So I'm very excited to try this out and I'll let you guys know at the end of the video what my thoughts are. I also got a new Evercolor Poreless Face Defender. I haven't owned this in a couple of years. I used to buy it all the time and I actually have an entire video on my channel about this one product. It's really old though, so if you look it up, the quality is not that great. But what I love about this is that it's basically an alternative to powder. It's a balm that you tap on over makeup and it seals everything in, it mattifies, but it doesn't give the dryness that a powder can give. So it's perfect if you have drier skin or a more mature skin type. And even though I'm saying it's a balm, it's not a balm in the sense that it doesn't feel greasy. It actually has a very stiff, waxy sort of feel to it. And it comes with a little sponge. So let me just show you what that looks like. So this is the sponge. It's really thick and it's nice and soft. And what you're supposed to do with this is just rub the sponge into the balm. And it honestly feels like you're not picking up any product, but you are. There's definitely some on there. And what I do is I pat it into the skin like this. You don't want to rub because then it might take your foundation off. So you want to just pat it lightly. And it feels like nothing's coming off of the sponge, but that's because this product is so weightless. It feels like absolutely nothing, but I'm just doing half of my hand so you can see the difference. And you can tell right away, there's a huge difference. This side, it looks very smooth and poreless. It takes down any kind of shine and mattifies just like a powder would. 
it really makes a huge difference and my skin feels so silky right where I put it. You could add powders on top if you want to add blush or bronzer. So this is a very, very underrated product. People don't talk about this nearly as much as it deserves, although I've heard that some people on TikTok are now kind of mentioning it. So it might blow up soon. And if that's the case, it's going to be hard to find. So if you're interested in this, I would definitely pick it up. Again, it's at Amazon and QVC. So I'll link to both down below just so you can choose whatever one is more convenient for you. I also wanted to try one of Mally's powder blushes. So this is the Bulletproof Powder Blush and I got the shade Proud Pink and I'm excited for this. It kind of, by the description, sounds a little bit like the Balms In Stain blushes, which kind of leave a stain on your skin. So it gives it that really bulletproof last all day kind of a vibe. So I just thought this color looked so beautiful and it looks just like it did online, which I'm happy about. It's a really nice cool tone pink with almost a little hint of lavender in it. So let's swatch it and see what it looks like. Wow, it's really pigmented. A lot just picked up on my finger. Oh my gosh. All right, I definitely am gonna have to go in lightly with this, but look at that color. That is so beautiful. I'm really excited to try this one out and I'll let you guys know how long it lasts at the end of the video. I also got a lip gloss from Mally. This is called Positively Plump Lip Gloss. I got the shade Bold Buff and it says, get the luscious full lips of your dreams in a single swipe with the ultra smooth gloss. It's enriched with a tingling plumping complex to instantly and comfortably boost your pout. It's also supposed to deeply hydrate as well. So I normally don't like plumping lip glosses, but this one isn't supposed to be a very intense gloss. It said that it was supposed to be more comfortable, but wow, look at the pigmentation. It's definitely not a sheer gloss and I love this color as well. It doesn't really have much of a scent to it and maybe like the mildest vanilla scent. It's really not super strong at all. And it looks like it's gonna be really shiny. It feels like it has a little bit of a thicker texture as well. So if you like a thick gloss, then you might really like this one. So again, I'll let you guys know at the end. And then the last thing I got from Mally is an eyeshadow palette. This is the Novelty Neutrals and it's a cream and powder eyeshadow palette. So I haven't tried one one of her palettes in so many years now, but this one had great reviews. So I did already swatch a couple of shades when I was downstairs just because I was so curious about it. So you're gonna see some of it has been touched already, but this kind of reminds me of the Patrick Ta palettes in the way that it's set up because it has the two cream bases on this side and then the rest are powder. And I'm actually keeping this little plastic piece just to try to keep the creams from drying out, but it's just a very basic everyday kind of neutral palette. So I want to do a couple of quick live swatches first just so you can see how everything swatches and then I'll show you everything swatched out on my arm. So let's do a couple of shimmer shades first. All right, so that shade feels kind of like a topper. It's not quite as creamy and it's kind of like a pink with a gold shift. It has little micro glitters in it. And then, yeah, this shimmer shade is definitely more of that like rich buttery feel. It has a decent amount of pigmentation and it's not overly sparkly or metallic. Let me just do a couple more shimmer shades. They're very, very smooth overall. There's not a lot of fallout, which is great. All right, let me just swatch a couple of matte shades. I'll do like a mid-tone and then a deeper one. Wow, these have amazing pigmentation, whoa. All right, I'm definitely excited to try this. Let me actually just swatch the cream shades as well. So there's this lighter kind of tan color here, and then there's a deeper brown. He's over here. So this lighter one I think would make a great base for eyeshadow if you just want to use it as a primer. And then here's the darker cream. Those are really smooth too, and they actually remind me a lot of the Patrick Ta ones. They're not greasy. They seem like they're gonna dry down really nicely. So I'm pretty excited for this palette. You guys know I do like more of a metallic shimmer shade, so I feel like these are maybe a little bit too subtle for my preferences, but there definitely are times that I want to wear a little bit more of a subtle look, so I would definitely reach for this palette for that. All right guys, so here's the whole thing swatched out. I think all the shades swatched really nicely. The only really different one is this duochrome, the pink and gold one. It just feels a little bit crumbly compared to some of the other shadows, but I think that's just because it's supposed to be more like a topper. And I do think there's a nice variety of different tones in here. You have some rosy tones and then some more regular brown neutrals, some warm tones, a few cool tones. So it's just a really well-rounded palette. And I think it's gonna be great for those of you who love shimmer shades but not necessarily metallic shades or glitters because these are a little bit more subtle but they still give a little
little bit of shine to your lids. Next, let's check out the Yensa foundation. I have gotten so many requests to try this one out. A lot of you said it's amazing for more mature skin. So this is the Super Serum Silk Foundation. They did have a couple of different ones on the QVC website. But this one says it's supercharged with skin-loving peptides and an age-defying complex of vitamin C, E, ferulic acid, and bacuchiol oil. It helps to brighten, improve firmness, and prevent fine lines and wrinkles. So I guess it's supposed to be like skincare. On the other side, it says that it offers a skin-like full coverage glow while working to smooth, firm, and brighten your complexion from within. So I got the shade, where's the shade? Light Neutral. Let's see what this is like. They did say it's a serum foundation, so I'm guessing it's probably going to be on the thinner side. All right, so this looks like it might be a little bit light for me, unfortunately. Oh, I'm so bummed. But actually, now that I'm blending it into my skin, it actually looks pretty good now. It looks like my hand kind of matches my wrist, so it might actually be okay. It definitely has a very nice hydrating feel, so I will be testing this out this week for sure. I'll let you know my thoughts at the end. And then we have a couple of new products from Tarte. So I ordered these from QVC because they weren't available at Sephora or Ulta yet, and they also were not on the Tarte website. Tarte often launches new products at QVC first. But I think at the point of filming now, it is available other places. So I'll make sure to link to all the options down below. But I got the Shape Tape Glow Bar. I feel like they're going to ride this Shape Tape wave forever. Even the new contour stick is called Sculpt Tape. And they gave me a free Shape Tape too, by the way, like a little free sample. But at QVC, they often will throw in something like a brush for free. And that's what ended up happening. So I paid the same price for this as anybody would, but I got the free brush. And it's actually really, really nice. So let's open this up and take a look. It says apply champagne blur all over to smooth and soften use bronze glow to sculpt and define and dust sunlit or bronze glow to the high points of face to illuminate so here's what the packaging looks like it's really nice this kind of reminds me of something that hourglass would have so this is the powder that they said to apply all over this is the highlight and then we have the bronzer so let's go ahead and do some quick swatches. These are a baked formula, which is always so nice and forgiving on the skin. Okay, so this one is the all over powder. It doesn't really have that much of a glow, maybe just slightly. This is the highlighter, just a little bit deeper. And then we have bronze glow. So none of these really have any visible shimmer or glitter. So if you're worried about these being overly sparkly, they don't appear to be. Granted, I haven't taken them out in the sunlight yet, so that could change things. But in indoor lighting, they don't look sparkly at all. I don't even see micro glitter. So I think these look really beautiful and I'm excited to give them a try. I feel like the bronzer might be just slightly warmer than I would like, but it's not bad. Next, we also have the Sculpt Tape. So I got this in the shade Soft Bronze, which I think was the lightest option. And the packaging of this looked kind of similar to the Charlotte Tilbury Contour Wand. So I feel like this is probably supposed to be a dupe for that. Oh my gosh, yeah, it's exactly the same. It has the little twist up and then you just squeeze the tube and it'll come through onto the sponge. Okay, so we have a little bit of the product there. I'm just gonna put it under this, I guess. So this color, I feel like it looks more like a bronzer than a contour, but it's really pretty. I could totally just use this to bronze up my face. I don't contour all that much anyway. I actually like the color of this better than the powder one, just because I think it's a little bit more cool toned and it has a little bit of rosiness to it too, which I really love in a bronzer. I just want to compare it quickly to the Milani liquid contour in the shade Honey. This is also the lightest shade, just in case this one is not really in your budget and you want a more affordable option. I want to see how they compare so let's take a quick look i feel like the milani one was also warmer like a bronzer yeah so this one is a little bit of a different color it's definitely not quite as rosy and it's more warm toned for sure so i do like the color of the tart one better than the milani but i also just saw online that flower beauty is coming out with a contour wand too and people have been seeing it in cbs stores so that could be another potential drugstore option to look for soon and then this is the brush that they gave me for free with the contour product on QVC. It's just a nice, dense, flat brush. So anyway, that was my entire QVC haul. I'm definitely going to try out as many of these products as I can this week. It's only Monday, so hopefully I'll have time to do that and I'll be able to review them at the end of the video for you guys. All right, next up we have the Winx Club collection from ColourPop. And honestly, I feel so old right now. I have no clue what this show even is. A lot of people are talking about it like it's a nostalgic thing. 
I was already in my 20s at that point, so it was definitely past my time. I grew up watching Gem. So anyway, we have the Just Like Magic's Pressed Powder Palette, also some face gems, some light sticks highlighters, some lip glosses, and then a glitterly obsessed glitter gel. So why don't we open all of this up? I'm not going to spend too, too much time on it because I feel like ColourPop's formula is normally very similar. So I just want to really show you guys some swatches. All right. So first up, we have the palette. Looks like we have all the characters on the front. Here's what the back looks like. This is definitely more of a colorful palette. Really, you have pretty much the whole rainbow here. There isn't one neutral. So I think some of you guys are going to love that. Some of you, not so much. I don't really wear color all that often, but I do love some of these lighter colors and more of the pastels. I feel like I could probably pair them with some neutrals. So I'm going to go ahead and swatch this and I'll be right back. All right, so here are all the colors swatched out. Some of these shades are so beautiful. This one right here is gorgeous. Also love this purple. This one here is a super shock. It looks white in the pan, but it's kind of shifts to like a duochrome purple. I would definitely use these three shades right here and do a purple eye look. I really love this teal and the mint green. I think those are super pretty as well. This green sparkly shade is also amazing. That would make such a nice topper. And this pink shimmer as well is really multidimensional. So I actually like this palette more swatched than I did seeing it in the pan. I think I definitely could get some looks out of this palette, even though I don't wear color all that much. Like I said, I would definitely wear the purples, some of the greens as well, and even some of these pinks I think are really pretty. So let me know your thoughts down below. Next up, we have the Glitterly Obsessed Gel in the shade Enchantix. So these are just glitter gels that you can use pretty much anywhere, either on your face or body. They have very big, chunky pieces of glitter, but they surprisingly don't feel scratchy. They actually feel very soft. They're in a very um, cushiony feeling base, and they really make quite an impact. This one just has just about every color in the rainbow in it. Next, we have three new shades of the Light Sticks Highlighter. So we have Darcy, which is kind of this pistachio green. Icy, which is a white, and then Stormy, which is a purple. And then here are the swatches. We have Darcy, Icy, and Stormy. These look so smooth and really beautiful. And then last but not least, we have six shades of their Ultra Glossy Lip. And these also come in a virtual rainbow of colors. So I'm curious to see if they actually go on like that or if they're a little more sheer. So let's do some swatches. Okay, so these are actually pretty sheer, but you can still see the color as well. So we have Stella, Bloom, Musa, Flora, Tecna, and then Aisha. And these have the most amazing vanilla scent. It's not just straight vanilla. It smells like a baked good, like a cupcake or a cookie. It's amazing. Hey guys, it's Wednesday and I just got a couple of PR packages in the mail. I got some skincare from L'Oreal and Skin Proud. And I also got a package from Pixie Beauty and they sent over some really fun looking stuff. So uh, let's go upstairs and do some swatches. Okay, so before we get into the makeup from Pixie, let's just check out the skincare products first. So the first box is from Skin Proud. I have mentioned their products on my channel before. They're super affordable. You can get them at Walmart and the formulas are actually really good. I've been enjoying everything that I got from them so far. So they sent over their Frozen Over Gel to Ice Hydrator. This is $15.97 and it's a moisture gel with hyaluronic acid and it can be used at room temperature for an instant burst of moisture or applied from the freezer for icy soothing hydration to combat tired, dull, or puffy skin. And then we have the Icicle Cooling Eye Balm. This is $16.50 and it says that it instantly freshens and tightens while helping to lock in hydration for healthy under eyes. It has a balm-like texture that can be used on bare skin or added over makeup for an instant pick-me-up. So here's a look at the packaging. I love this color. This is so, so pretty. I'll just take off the little cap and let's try some, I guess, just on the back of my hand. Oh, wow. This does feel cold. It feels freezing, actually. That is so cool. I think that would feel really good under tired eyes in the morning. And the balm feels really nice and hydrating, but it's not sticky. It just has a nice velvety feel. So I am definitely excited to try that one. And then let's check out this guy. I think this was going viral on TikTok at one point because it completely sold out. I did try to buy it like a couple months ago, so they must have it back in stock again. So here's a look at the packaging. 
and let's see the texture of the product okay so it's basically like a jelly type texture i'm just gonna put a little bit over here on this side it honestly feels cold right out of the jar but it's cool that you can stick it in the freezer as well and it has a really nice cushiony texture it feels very hydrating but as with any hyaluronic acid product if you live in a dry climate you're definitely going to want to seal this in with something otherwise it could pull the moisture out of your skin and work in reverse next i also got some skincare from l'oreal and they sent over the midnight serum and the midnight cream so i have seen the midnight serum talked about on various youtube videos but i didn't know that they had a cream version that might be new i'm not sure but this bottle oh my gosh it looks so high end it's incredibly heavy like i would not think that this was a drugstore product if i didn't know any better and this claims to have an antioxidant recovery complex it's supposed to firm smooth wrinkles and give 24 hour hydration so let's put some on the back of my hand i'll see how it feels so it has a little dropper style applicator just need to get a little bit more and it comes out kind of a yellowy color it's a very thin watery serum it has a little bit of a floral scent to it it kind of reminds me of a shampoo that i had back in the 90s i can't put my finger on what it is one thing that i want to mention right away though is that this makes my hand feel like absolute silk like it has a very velvety feel this is so smoothing you know what it reminds me of if you've ever tried that Prevage, it has the exact same feel on your skin, and I believe that one also has the same color to it as well. So I kind of wonder if L'Oreal is trying to dupe that. I'll have to look at the ingredient lists and compare them, but that was an antioxidant cream as well. I don't even know if they still make that, but anyway. Next, let's check out the Midnight Cream, and this one has, again, very heavy, luxurious packaging. This also has the same floral scent, and wow, this is a super thick cream. I don't know if you guys can really tell on camera, but it's almost like a balm. It's very rich. I think you can totally tell the difference between my two hands. This one has the Skin Proud stuff on it, which is very hydrating. I mean, my skin looks super smooth and it feels soft. But over here, this one, you can just tell the richness of it because it hasn't really sunken into my skin and it doesn't really feel like it's going to anytime soon. So anyway, guys, I'm going to start trying out all the skincare. I don't think I'll really be able to let you know much by the end of this video because it hasn't been long enough. But if I end up really loving any of these products, I'll be sure to let you know in a future update video. All right, next, let's check out what Pixie sent over. So they sent their Eye Lift Max. It says that it's a long wear liquid shadow that leaves a veil of flattering color. Their Endless Silky eye pen these are amazing they're some of my favorite eyeliners the large lash mascara something i've never tried before but it says that it has fibers the flawless beauty primer i haven't tried in many years but i believe it's a glowy primer similar to like the charlotte tilbury hollywood flawless filter honestly this product was like the og because it's been out there forever then we have the plus c vitamin lip brightener and the nuance quartet blush quad it says this creamy powder is formulated with ceramides vitamin e and botanical extracts so i'm just gonna pop all of this out of the box and then we'll do some swatches Okay, so let's try the Flawless Beauty Primer first. I'm excited to sort of reacquaint myself with this one because it's been so many years since I've used it. I kind of don't remember exactly what it was like. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's right. It has a really pretty pinky tone to it, which I liked for my skin tone because I have a little bit more of that pink undertone. I felt like it looked really flattering, but it feels very, very creamy. And similar to something like the Hollywood Flawless Filter or the e.l.f. Halo Glow. And I actually like this packaging better than something like this. I just feel like it's more sanitary. It doesn't have the doe foot applicator. And I would say this has more glow than the e.l.f. one does. It's more similar to the Charlotte Tilbury, in my opinion. Next, let's look at the Large Lash Mascara. I just want to check out the brush, but I'm definitely going to try this out this week. So it has a really big and chunky brush on it. Not really my favorite because I have hooded eyes and I always tend to get mascara on my lids, especially with a larger brush, but I'm still gonna test it out and we'll see how it works. Next up, we have the Vitamin C Lip Treat. So this is just, I guess, like a tinted balm. It actually might be one of those pH adjusting things. It didn't say so on the packaging, but that's sort of the vibe it's giving me. I'm just going to put it there and see if it deepens at all. All right, it's actually been a couple minutes, and it really hasn't deepened, so maybe it's not a pH thing. I actually prefer it if it's not, because those always turn a really hot pink on me. I like that this is just very, very subtle, and it gives a little bit of sheen, so that's really nice. And then next, let's try out the Eye Lift Max. I'm really excited for these. This is the shade Sunset and Chiffon. So here's the shade Sunset first. 
it's like a really pale peachy color and then chiffon is more of a champagne shade so these said that they had extreme long wear on the packaging and they do have a really nice silky feel. They're not at all sticky or anything like that. They have almost like a cushiony, moussey texture to them. Wow, these would look so pretty. I can't wait to try them. And then last but not least, we have the Nuance Quartet and this is in the shade Honey Nectar. So we have, it looks like a matte blush, a bronzer, a highlighter, and then maybe like a blush topper or just another highlighter. So let's go ahead and swatch these colors. This highlight actually feels like it could be a baked formula. It's so smooth. Okay, so we have the blush. Wow. Look at how smooth and silky that is. My gosh. All right, then we have the highlighter, which is a little bit on the patchier side, and it's very glittery. And then we have the bronzer. Whoa, that is also super smooth, just like the blush. And then we have the blush topper or pink highlighter, whichever it is. So just based on a swatch right now, the blush and bronzer are some of the smoothest powders I think I've ever swatched. They just glide on like silk. Not really super impressed with this highlighter right now. I'm not crazy about this golden shade. And also I just feel like it's kind of glittery for my taste, but I do like this one a lot. It's a really pretty pink with like a golden shift to it. So let's just quickly swatch the Endless Silky Eye Pen. This is in the black shade. I used to have a ton of colors because it was my absolute favorite eye pencil. Look at that. It is jet black. You hardly have to put any pressure on it at all. It's a waterproof formula, really similar to the Urban Decay All Nighter. So these are fantastic. I think they're around 12 bucks. So they're like around half the price of the Urban Decay ones. Anyway, guys, that's everything that I got from Pixie. I'm gonna try as many of these out as I possibly can in the next couple of days and try to give you some feedback at the end of the video. Hey guys, it's Thursday. I just got my Ulta order in the mail and I had picked up the new Essence Keep Me Covered Long Lasting Foundation and Concealer. I also got some of the new e.l.f. Camo Color Correctors. I got the peach one and also the green one for redness. And then I got this beautiful highlighter from JCAT. It looks like it could potentially be a blush lighter. So I figured we'd just head upstairs and swatch all of these out. Okay, so let's start out with the Camo Color Correctors first from e.l.f. So like I said, I got the light peach one, or I guess it's just peach. They did have a deeper peachy color as well, but this one says that it's for fair to medium skin tones, and it's supposed to basically camouflage darkness. So if you have darkness around your eyes, that's what I plan to use it for. So... And that's what it looks like. And it definitely has a nice amount of pigment to it. It's not a sheer color corrector at all. And then we have the green shade. So this one is supposed to cancel out redness, which I do have a lot of around my nose, especially. And sometimes it's very hard to get just foundation and concealer to cover it by itself. So using a color corrector underneath will really help to neutralize that. So there's the green one. I just wanna quickly see how these blend out. And obviously I don't want my skin to look green, but at the same time you want it to have enough pigmentation to actually work. And yeah, these look like they do definitely blend out nicely, so I'm excited to give those a try. Next, let's check out the JCAT You Glow Girl Baked Highlighter. So this one is in the shade Crimson Gleam. So here's a close-up look, and I love the rose embossment on the powder. That looks so pretty. All right, let's swatch it and see what it looks like. Oh, wow. Look at how pretty. That is definitely gonna give a little bit of color as well as a highlight. So you could use this as a very light glowy blush or you could use it as a blush topper as well. Definitely excited to play with this one. And then we have the Essence Keep Me Covered Long Lasting Foundation. I got the shade 40 Alabaster, but I had no idea what color to pick. On the Ulta website, I feel like the colors are always so off. So I have no idea. This looks like it's actually kind of light for me and it definitely wasn't the lightest shade by far. This says it has a silky lightweight texture and a smooth matte finish, medium to high coverage for up to 16 hours, and it's supposed to be waterproof. So I don't normally like matte finish foundations, but I do normally like Essence's formulas. So we'll have to see. This is definitely way too light for me. Oh man, that stinks. I feel like this is really just gonna wash me out. But formula-wise, it does feel really hydrating, but as I'm blending it in, it's actually drying down very fast, so it doesn't stay sticky or dewy. It definitely has a matte finish. It does look a little bit dry if I look up close, but my hands are really dry. They're always dry. I wash them a lot, especially in the winter time, so it might look better on my face. We'll see. And then we have the Keep Me Covered Concealer. I also got this one in the shade Alabaster, 
but this one is 30 and the foundation was 40. So I don't know why they're a little bit different, but anyway, this says that it's buildable medium coverage, a creamy texture with aloe vera. When it comes to concealer, I don't mind if that's a little bit lighter than my skin tone because it helps to brighten a little. I'm just gonna put it over here. This seems like a pretty decent shade. I'm just gonna blend it out. It says it's lightweight, but it actually kind of has somewhat of a thicker feel. It's definitely not light like a serum concealer would be. It really does have a little bit of thickness to it, but again, it dries down immediately. It really feels a lot like the foundation texture-wise. So anyway, if I get a chance to play with these this week, I will definitely update you at the end of the video. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's a little bit later on Thursday, and I just got a PR package from Essence, and it looks like it is the new foundation and concealer that I literally just got from Ulta earlier today and the reason that I ordered it I usually do get PR from Essence but I saw other influencers talking about this specific PR package like last week and I just figured that they weren't sending this to me or maybe I wasn't on the list anymore I don't know it happens all the time so I decided to order it myself but then <laughs> it just showed up so maybe there's a better color in here for me at least we'll see but the only thing is it comes in this case that's locked so they have a little instruction card here so uh, the three digit code would be five, and then this is six, and then the third clue is rhymes with shoe, so that's two, so it's five, six, two. Oh, actually, you know what? It's already on there, and I'm gonna leave it on there because there's no way I'm gonna remember this code if I get rid of this paper right here, so I think I'm just always gonna leave it on five, six, two. So, let's see, it's a button. What do you have to do here? Maybe slide it. Aha, here we go. All right, so inside it looks like they sent me three different shades of each. This is actually a really cute train case for travel. It has like a little pouch here. Very cool. All right, so for the foundation, they sent me shade 50 ivory, 60 shell, and 80 light medium. Here's just a look at the three shades all together. I feel like the first two look almost identical and they do look like more of a neutral, maybe cool undertone. The deeper one looks a little bit warmer. And then the concealers actually all look like the same color for some reason. We have 20 fair. This one is 30 alabaster and this one is also 20 fair. I think they sent me two of those by mistake. So these two are exactly the same color, but I mean, even these two, I don't know, I don't see a ton of difference between them, but let's go ahead upstairs really quick. We'll swatch these. Whatever shades don't exactly work for me. I have two sisters with very similar skin tone to mine, so I'm sure I can just gift the other ones to them. So, all right, let's check these out. Okay, so let's go ahead and swatch the additional shades. You guys already saw me apply the foundation and concealer to my hand, and I talked about the formula a little bit, so now I just really wanna focus on these extra colors. I think some of these might be a better match than alabaster for me. Here we have the three foundation shades. We have number 50 ivory, 60 shell, and then 80 light medium. So obviously this one is out because it almost looks orange against my skin tone. Definitely the wrong color. I sort of like the slightly cooler undertone that shell has, but I think it's just slightly too deep. And then again with ivory, I feel like we're almost getting a little bit too light. And again, it's more on the yellow side. So I'm not really crazy about any of the shades that I have right now for my skin tone. And then when it comes to the concealer, you might remember they sent me two of the fair shade, which is number 20, and then one alabaster, which is 30. And I already actually purchased alabaster from Ulta. So I'm gonna save one of the fair and one of the alabaster and just keep those sealed up and just swatch these two. So first we have the fair shade and then alabaster. They look almost identical. They're very, very close. I think once you blend them out, you probably wouldn't be able to tell much of a difference. Honestly, this one is just ever so slightly darker. I think I like this one a little bit better for my skin tone. This one might be a little bit too light and bright. So anyway, guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts on these new Essence products down below. Have you actually tried them yet? If you have, definitely let us all know down in the comments. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get into some mini reviews. Earlier in the week, I tried the Mali Beauty Stressless Foundation, and as I was applying it, I really loved how moisturizing it felt on my skin and the smoothing effect that it had. I know I mentioned this during the unboxing portion, but it really does remind me a lot of the Lisa Eldridge Foundation, and it's almost $20 cheaper. It also gave me solid medium coverage, and I just left it like that. I didn't try to build it up to full. I could still see my sunspots and freckles on my cheeks coming through, but honestly, that's fine. I actually prefer 
prefer to not be completely covered and I really liked how this foundation looked exactly like my skin. A few hours later in the car picking up my son from school, I wanted to see how it looked in the natural outdoor lighting and I was really happy to see how beautiful it still looked. The foundation didn't sink into fine lines or pores. It still looked really smooth on my skin and the natural finish that it has doesn't have any shimmer or sparkle. It also doesn't look too dewy or too matte. It's like the perfect happy medium. So I was really, really happy with this formula. Next up, we have the Mally Blush. Oh my gosh, it is the most beautiful shade. I started out lightly at first because I was worried about it being too pigmented. And then I just built it up to my desired result. And I just thought this color was perfection. It's really a long lasting formula too. I could still see it when I was going to take my makeup off later in the evening. So it really does remind me a lot of the Balm's Instain blushes. And now I feel like I have to go and pick up more colors because this is a really good one. When it comes to the Mali Novelty Neutrals palette, I started out with that lighter cream shade and I blended it across my lid just with my finger as a primer. It dried right down and it didn't feel sticky and I felt like it did a nice job at evening out the skin on my lid and it created a really nice canvas for eyeshadows. Next I took the deeper cream shade and I applied that to the outer corner of my eyes because that's usually where I put my deeper shadow colors and I felt like this might give them a little bit of extra oomph and staying power. It blended in seamlessly with a brush, so you can either use that or your fingers, whichever one you prefer. Next, I picked up a beige transition color from the palette, and I just blended that into and kind of above my crease toward my brow bone, and I thought this one also applied and blended really nicely. Then I grabbed a slightly deeper taupe shade and I blended that into my crease as well, keeping it a little bit lower than the first beige shade. This also went on very smoothly and it wasn't patchy at all. Next, I picked up a deeper chocolatey brown shade to apply to my outer corner on top of that deeper primer. And I picked this up with a smaller brush and just kind of patted it there. And once I had it in place, I blended it with a fluffier blending brush. This one was also really seamless, no patchiness. It was awesome. For my lid, I really wanted to use that pretty topper shade that shifts from pink to gold. And since that shade was a little bit crumblier than the other shades, I actually picked it up with my finger and I just spritzed a little bit of setting spray on it to make it hold together better and pop a little bit more on my eyes. That actually worked really well. And I felt like the final result came out super pretty. It's a really nice everyday neutral palette. It's not going to be anything bold or metallic. I think these are just your everyday soft neutrals. Finally, I wanted to try the Mally Plumping Gloss and I really love this formula and the color too. It's a thicker, kind of tackier gloss. And I know some people don't like those, but I feel like those are the kind that stay on the best. It is still going to transfer obviously because it's a gloss but the stickier ones just tend to stay put a little bit longer. It did have a very mild tingling sensation, but I'm saying this as somebody who absolutely hates plumping lip glosses. This one really didn't bother me at all. It only lasted a few minutes and I really love the intense shine that this has and it really just kind of made my lips look a little bit plumper. The next day, I was really excited to try out the Yensa foundation after so many of you guys recommended it to me. And I have to say, I felt like the coverage on this one was fantastic. I could see a huge huge difference from one side of my face to the other. It really covered up most of my freckles and my sunspots very easily. And while I was initially worried about the color, I actually think this matches me perfectly. And the formula has a little tiny bit of a radiant finish, a little more than the Mali one. So I felt like even though this does have a very skin-like finish and it didn't look heavy or makeup-y, the tiny little bit of glow kind of highlighted my texture a little bit more than the Mali one did. It just didn't look quite as smooth. But then later on at my son's school pickup, I thought this looked amazing in natural lighting. It didn't look as glowy as it did in my studio lights, but granted it was also a very overcast cloudy day. So I'm not sure what it would look like in the sun. It might be a completely different story, but I just thought this had a very natural look overall and it had amazing coverage. I was also excited to try the Tarte face palette. So I started out with the shade that they said to kind of dust all over your skin. And I used the brush that they gave me, which was really nice by the way. It was super soft and I think this powder did give me just the slightest bit of a glow. It's kind of more of that lit from within sort of look that isn't super sparkly or too much like the hourglass powders can sometimes be. 
This one is just really subtle and I love that about it. I didn't use the bronzer shade in the palette because I was planning on using the contour wand. So speaking of that, I dabbed a few dots on my cheek and I blended it with the brush that they gave me. And I really loved the very subtle sun-kissed look that this gave me. I don't think the shade is deep enough to really create that shadowy kind of contoured look, but as a light bronzer, I think it's wonderful. I loved how easily the formula blended out on my skin and I just thought the overall result was a warming of my skin that didn't look super obvious like I was wearing bronzer. So I really like this one. Next up for my eyes, I used that Pixie Cream Shadow in the shade Chiffon and I just put this down as a base for my eyeshadow coming up in a minute. And I really love the soft, moussey texture that it has. I knew that eyeshadow was gonna blend really well on top of it too because it dries right down and it doesn't leave a sticky feel. Plus it added a little bit of coverage and color to cancel out the darkness and the discoloration. I also couldn't wait to try that beautiful blush in the Pixie Face Quad, so I applied that to the apples of my cheeks and I was pleasantly surprised that it actually wasn't too pigmented. It looks so bright in the pan, but on my skin, it's just the prettiest pop of pink and it's really smooth formula that just kind of melts right in seamlessly. I also added a little bit to my nose for that cold girl look that everybody's doing now and I thought it came out really cute. Next up for eyeshadow, I wanted to try out the ColourPop Winx Club palette. So first I picked up the lightest pink matte shade and I applied this one all over my crease, blending it up toward the brow bone. It didn't really show up that well. It was pretty subtle against my skin tone. Then I picked up the mint green matte shade and I applied this one a little bit lower in my crease and kind of blended it into the pink shade a little bit. I really love those two colors together. I think they make such a pretty combo. And then I added the deeper emerald green matte to the outer corner of my eye and I packed it on with a really small flat brush and then I blended it toward the center of my lid with a fluffier brush. And this shade applied beautifully. It was so smooth and it didn't have any kind of patchiness to it at all. Then for my lid, I picked up that really light green shimmer shade and wow, this one makes such an incredible impact on my eyes. I actually applied this one with my fingers on top of the NYX glitter glue. I just wanted to make sure that it stayed put and it honestly looked perfect until I took it off at night. I highly recommend that NYX glitter glue, by the way. I've been using that for just about every eyeshadow look and it is fantastic. Next, I tried the Pixi Large Lash Mascara and I was a little bit scared of the big brush to be honest with you, but I was surprised I didn't get any of it on my eyelids. It's not a really wet formula, but it's also not dry, so it didn't take a ton of building up. I feel like it's right in between. I also thought this gave me a decent amount of length and volume while still keeping my lashes separated and fluffy looking and zero clumps. So I really love that about it. I usually just like a little bit more length and volume though. So I feel like this one gives more of a natural lash look. And then finally, I tried one of the Winx Club lip glosses. This was the light pink one called Bloom, and it was really pretty, but nothing super duper special. It's a lip gloss, I guess. It kind of had a nice non-sticky texture. And as I mentioned before, I love the scent, but I wasn't crazy super excited about it. I mean, it's a nice sheer gloss beyond that. I don't feel like it's something you have to run right out and buy. And then later in the week, I wanted to try out the new e.l.f. Camo color correctors. So I used the peach one to correct the darkness around my eyes, both in the inner and outer corners. And I do think it really worked well to cancel those out. So I was happy with that. And then I used the green one on and around my nose area where I have all the redness. And this worked really well. By the time I was actually finished blending it in, my nose pretty much looked the same color as my face. So I feel like at that point, my foundation doesn't have to work quite as hard to cover all of that up. Next up, I used the Essence Foundation and I used the shade 60 Shell. And I actually think this one matches pretty well. I wasn't sure when I swatched them on my arm, but I think this is a decent match. It also has a creamy feel at first, but it dries super fast and it didn't really feel quite as hydrating on my skin as the Mali or the Yensa foundations did. It has a natural finish and it has medium coverage and it looked good on most areas of my face, but I felt like it looked a little bit drier on my nose and chin, which are usually my trouble spots. Next, I used the Essence Concealer in Alabaster and this one was actually pretty nice. I thought it had medium coverage and it looked pretty natural on my skin. I was a little bit worried, honestly, about it looking dry 
dry under my eyes because the foundation was a little bit dry, but surprisingly it didn't. It also didn't sink into my fine lines, which I thought was great. So then when I took a closer look at my skin outside a few hours later, I thought my skin looked a little bit more textured than it did with the other foundations. It looked kind of dry and a bit heavy and makeup-y on my skin. It kind of looked obvious and I was really rooting for this one because it's so affordable, but I actually prefer their pretty natural foundation to this one. I just feel like it might be a little bit too dry for my particular skin type, but if you're combo to oily, you might feel completely differently about this one. So I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. I just also feel like the shade range on this really isn't the best. So that was a little bit disappointing. Okay. So those are all the products I actually got to try this week. The other things that I didn't mention, I haven't actually tried yet. So let's go ahead and rank. I think there were 14 things altogether. So let's start out with my favorite and kind of work downward. So the absolute number one best product, and I really didn't even talk about this here, but I used it every single day is the Mali face defender. I am in love with this all over again. It is just the most amazing product. Every time I wore foundation, I put this on and it just smoothed over my pores and fine lines and made everything look so perfected without the dryness that a powder would give you. Coming in at number two, it would have to be the Smalley Blush. Oh my goodness, the color is so pretty. It's not like a lot of other blushes that I have in my collection. So I love it for the shade, but I also love the formula. It's so long lasting. This is amazing. In the number three spot, I have to give it to the Mali Stressless Foundation. This is so good. I love how smooth it looks on my skin and the really natural finish that it has. It's awesome. And then at number four, we have the Yensa Foundation. And honestly, it's almost tied with the Mali one. I can't decide between these two right now because I love them both. I'm only ranking this slightly below the Mali right now because it had that little bit of glow that I felt like enhanced my texture just slightly, but then it looked way better in the car, so it might have just had to settle into my skin a little bit. I don't know. Either way, I love this. At number five, we have the e.l.f. color correctors. I can definitely see myself using these on an everyday basis because they correct the redness and the darkness. I feel like then I can go in and just use my lighter coverage foundations and I don't have to worry about them not covering up those trouble spots. Then at number six, we have the Tarte Contour Wand. It's a gorgeous color, easy to use, and it gives a really beautiful, subtle warmth to my skin. Then at number seven, we have the Tarte Face Palette. I love how smooth these powders are and that they're not glittery. I would say the only reason I took a little bit of points off is because I'm not crazy about this bronzer color, but these other two powders, I feel like I can blend them all over my face and they don't enhance texture or look glittery at all. At number eight, we have the Mali Novelty Neutrals Palette. I think this has an outstanding formula and I love the addition of the cream shades that are in here. The only reason it's not higher up on my list is just because I prefer shimmer shades that have a little bit more of a metallic finish or something that pops a little bit more and I felt like this one is more subtle, but that might be something that you really, really love about it. At number nine, we have the Winx Club palette. This actually really surprised me. I wasn't expecting to like it because I'm not really big into color, but I love the green look that I did the other day and I'm wearing it again today. I used some of the purples. I put this one in my crease, even though it's a shimmer shade. And then I put this one from the outer corner kind of to the middle. And then I used this super shock in the inner corner and blend it back this way. And I also use the pink a little bit in my crease, but I've been kind of having fun experimenting with color a little bit here and there. So that one was a bit of a surprise. Then at number 10, we have the Pixie Face Quad. I absolutely love the blush that's in here. It's so smooth and seamless. I love the color, but I took points off because I just feel like I won't really use the rest of this palette. Maybe I would use this blush topper or highlighter, but this one, I'm not crazy about the color and the texture of it. It just feels a little bit scratchy. And this bronzer isn't my favorite color bronzer either. So I really don't see myself using half of this palette. I think the blush is kind of the best part. At number 11, we have the Eye Lift Max Shadows from Pixi. These are pretty and they have a nice formula, but I just don't know how necessary they really are for my collection. I used it as a primer because I don't feel like they give a ton of color. They're really subtle and sheer. So I don't really see myself wearing them on their own as eyeshadows. Maybe they just gave me some lighter shades and there are some deeper options. You'll have to let me know if you've tried these, but I use my Sigma eyeshadow primer every single day. So I just don't really see myself 
reaching for these necessarily as a primer. At number 12, we have the Essence Concealer. I thought that this one was actually pretty decent, but I don't feel like it stands out to me. I have other concealers in my collection that I would probably reach for over this one. It just didn't really stand out to me as anything super special. And I would say the same thing with the Winx Club glosses, which are at the number 13 spot. It's just a standard lip gloss. It's pretty, it doesn't really excite me a whole bunch. And I don't feel like you have to run right out and buy them. Unless of course you're a fan of Winx Club, in that case, go for it. And at the bottom of my list, number 14 would be the Essence Foundation. I was really kind of disappointed with this one, both in the shade range and just how this looked on my skin, especially after a few hours of wear, I just felt like it was a little bit drying. So anyway, I think I covered everything that I wanted to talk about. If I didn't mention anything in my ranking, it's just because I didn't try it. So thank you guys so much for hanging in there with me. I don't know how long this video is gonna be, but my Sunday hauls are generally a longer video. If you enjoyed this and you'd like to see some of my previous Sunday hauls from 2022, I'll put the playlist right here and you could check those out. Thank you all so much for spending part of your day here with me. I really, really appreciate it so much. If you're new here and you enjoyed this video, I hope you'll consider hitting the subscribe button and I'll see you guys in my next video. Take care. Bye.